Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. It is not that bright, not that early, but it is 830 and the markets are in full swing. We could potentially have one of those palm tree candles, one of those God candles to the upside. And I want to go over some targets and invalidations for the current move. Um, so first off, is first off, let's take a look at traditional markets. And uh, what we were looking at last week for the potential head and shoulders and kind of a dump to the downside, um, this double shoulder, you know, could have been the invalidation. Um, and I would say as long as, you know, we are above this higher low, Traditional markets are looking pretty good to, uh, for another upside move. The other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, this guy here, uh, I'll start charts. Um, we are coming into the election year, right? And typically pre-election uh, going into September, uh, you get a bit of a sideways consolidation and then a breakout uh, towards the end of the month or the end, the, the last quarter kind of thing. Um, anyways, just something to consider. This has been the pattern and the trend is the blue line. This is where we're at today, right? Uh, for the S and P 500. And yeah. So another interesting fact within 12 months, the stock market, if we come within 5% of making a new all time high, traditionally speaking, and we got within one and a half percent, uh, within the next 12 months, stocks make a new all-time high. That's how it's happened every single time since the dawn of the stock market. So do we have another wave of liquidity coming into the market? Well, um, I would suggest, yes, uh, they're going to turn the printing press on at some point. I don't know if it's going to be this year or next year, but the high economic impact data coming out uh, there was nothing today. Today was a Chinese bank holiday. I don't know what that looks like, but they are pumping some liquidity in the market here over the last day. Um, tomorrow, you got building permits and then the big one, uh, the FOMC interest rate decision. Are we going to go above five and a half percent? Well, let's take a look at our friendly little. No, that's not it. Whoops. Here we go, uh, the CME rate height calculator. Somehow they gauge what people think the next uh, rate hike is gonna be. I don't know who votes on this and who makes the decision, but I don't know if you guys saw, I posted a thing over the weekend, $6 gasoline, 650 I think I saw here. Uh, and everybody's saying, no, 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 they're not gonna raise rates, the ECB, did raise rates. So something to prepare for if we get called a black swan and Powell comes out and says, oh, we're going to do another quarter basis point. Well, I would suspect uh, that would be bearish for the market. And this downside move does play out. If they just kind of hold things the same and he talks nice to us, well, bullish for the market. Next up, Dixie, uh, oh, look at that. Well, just a tick below that low, we're probably gonna drag it on down to the nine. And in fact, if we are printing a couple drives of bearish divergence, which, how would we confirm that uh, hidden bearish divergence? Well, we got this hot, yeah. There's gonna be quite a few drives. If we do close anywhere here or lower, expect you know, a greater downside move for the dollar and uh, momentum again will cross up today uh, back up above call it 105 and uh, on the four hour time frame 105.38 we're going to cross down the four hour candle does look like that so again it does look like this one does want to come down you know and test the 21 one more time and essentially as long as we are above 103 which I believe is the weekly pivot. Momentum remains to the upside as long as the dollar is closes above 103.76 this week. If that does flip back down, that would be good for the bulls. Again, when the dollar goes down, risk assets typically go up. It's not always a direct correlation, but 
I expect some volatility coming this week. Definitely volatility this week and Bitcoin gearing up for what could be a potential 45% move. Make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. I'm going to get into what that signal is, how to prepare for it, and uh, just a second here. So next up, next up, excuse me while I get, um, get into my energy drink of choice. They're not sponsoring the channel yet, but uh, Celsius, there's a free invite for you. Tether Dominance. Coming down, bullish for altcoins. As you can see, we got some green on the board today. We mix pumping it the greatest. I don't know what that coin does. GMX up 6%. And then also Chainlink. Um, Chainlink, I, I don't see it on this chart, but um, I know Linky, Mr. Slinky Linky, he is doing pretty good. All right, Bitcoin dominant uh, did want to... Look at that nice bull flag breakout to the upside. Looks like it wants to tag the purple 200. Um, essentially does need to hold this higher low if Bitcoin dominance is going to remain strong. And Bitcoin to assume the control or continue with the dominance in the market. So point for the Bitcoin bulls there as we are breaking out here. <clears throat> Probably going to get a run back to the top side of the range if we can break that. Well, that. That gives us our next target up there, um, which probably going to be official test of the 618 on the weekly time frame. That's what we are looking for. 618 coming in at 58.57. Not 0.5 is the next target right there. Okay, and what else do I want to bring up? Bitcoin dominance. Let's take a look at total market cap as well. The total market cap is all the cryptocurrencies um, by market cap smashed together. And where is total? Here it is. And total uh, looks like a, you know trying to put in a massive higher low here. Nope, that's a lower low. Sorry, guys. On a closing basis, a lower low on a wick basis, it's a higher low. So where do you draw the line? Typically, the candle uh, the candle body closures is a stronger a stronger signal. But then the, uh, you know, the wicks are going to catch your major bull traps and bear traps. So I'll let you be the decider there. Is uh, total market cap heading up or down? Put a vote in the comments below. Do you think total market cap is going to continue onwards and upwards? Better yet, Bitcoin, right? And um, I want to go over some of the bullish news, some of the bearish news, but particularly what I'm looking at in regards to the four hour time frame, we have been talking about the four hours going to close in about 22 minutes. The hourly also looking like uh, the move is about to get faded, and the 15 minute as well, hitting the 618 for a bit of a trap move. And this is what I was a bit afraid of before I came on stream here, um, which I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and make an adjustment here while I am. Bear with me just a second. Post only versus allow taker. Do you know the difference? Do you know the difference? And Coinbase is a sham. Coinbase is a sham. Coinbase definitely um, has no love for, for you, your family, or your friends, sir. And I am just going to let this position. Mm. So what happens on the 15 minute time frame when we are putting in a top? Well, you potentially get what's called the M formation, which call it what you will. Um, call it what you will, the M formation. So 
as long as we're below this high, essentially on the 15 minute time frame, then we can expect kind of a kickback down to the bottom side of the range, or at least back for a higher low um, on the daily time frame. Here's the points for the bears, okay? Um, the two day and the daily are coming into kind of your massive resistance area right here. And uh, it's light volume on a bank holiday in China, right? So mostly bots and algorithms are going to be taking uh, this price action and, you know, kind of driving the markets. Also, you got the Binance FUD, Binance, um, you know, the SEC is going after Binance, telling them to shut all their assets down in America. Um, what else I want to bring up? I thought this was pretty interesting here. This guy, uh, Leon Wademan, stable, stable coin and global liquidity recovery, the catalyst for the next crypto rally. So um, just briefly summarizing this, and it does take a bit to um, kind of understand, but he says, turning our gaze, uh, so U.S. Treasury bonds, tokenization, and the new era of stable coin liquidity. Turning our gaze to the cryptocurrency market, we can observe that while TVL in DeFi, including liquid staking, has been fairly steady around 60 billion mark, there are early signs of stabilization of the stablecoin market cap since April 2022. The stable market cap declined by 26%, but this decline seems to come at an end. Over the last few weeks, stablecoin market cap has been stabilizing above $122 billion mark. This could be a signal for a potential revival of on-chain liquidity and resurgence of investors' interest. The development is perhaps primarily driven by ongoing tokenization of RWAs, real-world assets. That's what the guy um, Larry Fink was talking about from BlackRock. Everything's going to be tokenized. Just accept it. Um, for example, MakerDAO's DAI has been growing by over $1 billion since May. And more real-world assets, especially U.S. Treasuries, are being used to back stable coin to produce a yield around 5% each year for everyone who decides to lock their DAI into a Spark protocol. The source of the yield can be verified on-chain and is generated by a mix of RWAs and staked Ethereum and other yield bearing assets. So what's happening? They're taking stable coins like USDT, DAI, and they're backing them with real world assets, also known as US treasuries. I don't know why they do that. And uh, staked Ethereum, right? And then they're providing a real yield. Uh, stable coin yields seem to finally become competitive again due to more and more RWAs uh, being tokenized on blockchain networks, examining the overreaching RWA sector pronounced surge is palpable, palpable, potentially sign signaling a liquidity re-entry into the crypto markets. While Bitcoin and Ethereum might witness minor retractions in their valuations, my bullish stance remains unshaken. The wider lens spanning both traditional finance and on-chain indicators paints a promising future tableau, I don't know what that word is, uh, from both a traditional and on-chain liquidity perspective, the crypto market current risk reward profile is arguably one of the most enticing we've encountered in recent memory. Remember, clarity and insights in paramount uh, are paramount in our rapidly evolving financial landscape. Stay tuned for more. I mean, awesome, awesome posts talking about liquidity, resurgence in stable coins. Um, nice little picture of a breakout here in FedNet liquidity. And I'll just bring up one of our charts here um, to bring out a point and uh, a point for the bear. So point for the bears, silver cross to the downside. Second test on the two day time frame of the green 55 is usually a sell. Same thing on the daily, usually a sell on the first pass, right? I can't tell you how many times I've seen that happen. Now, uh, what would we expect here? The bull case and the bear case, right? The bull case is, well, 
We come and put a higher low somewhere around the 0.5 or the 618. As long as we're above this level right here, this is my invalidation point now, uh, you know, provided that we don't uh, come any, any higher here today, <clears throat> which could we head above the 236? Notice the fibs. The fibs are a very, very powerful tool. But uh, if we close somewhere like around 27.4, did we really pop up to 27.4? Um, if we close somewhere around here, 27.3, 27.4, it's going to look good uh, for, you know, a little bit of a pullback and then uh, judge it from there. And as long as we're above the box, the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, peace and prosperity above the box, death and despair below the box, that is going to be your kind of signal. Um, again, you know, close it daily back above 28.1 and I'm ready to call it a moonshot. Back above 31,000 and the real area to reclaim, and I think it's more easily seen on the CMEs here. <clears throat> the area to reclaim is this guy right there at uh, call it 35,000 bucks. Back above 35,000. You know, still got a downtrend, still got a major trend line coming in there. And, you know, the opportunity to test both sides is there. Um, and essentially, if we do get a breakout of this ascending triangle, um, you're going to see a, you know, bit of a move, right? Back to the top side of the range, back to the green box. I'd probably imagine a sell from there. But uh, what has given us that bias for a 45% move? Well, simply put, it is the it is the weekly in the five day time frame, and uh, well, the extremely low volatility levels and expansion. Right, so we define expansion above 25%. When this expands, we should see a bit of a 45% move or more and weekly soaks will cross up above 27,300 oddly enough that's the pivot we are at right now so going to be a critical level and that little level here that i have drawn out is from a 15 minute candle that i've had you know for some weeks i just pulled it back up and that's going to be a critical level on the lower term time frames if we can get back above there and uh, specifically this blue candle right here. If we can get back above that candle and kind of make a higher low and do something like this, that would be a good indicator that, hey, this move is going to continue onwards and upwards, and we're probably going to test this trend line one more time. Probably going to imagine some sell pressure up there as well. Uh, just diving a little deeper where we at in the grand scheme of the uh, 618 here. Where do the bull traps come in? Where do the bear traps come in? Well, at the 618 to the not 0.5, which is pretty much where we're at today. And I would say this looks like it wants to give an attempt up to that 29,961 area. Um, as long as we don't get any horrible news, I'm gonna put that box back, whoops. As long as we don't get any horrible news from Powell this week, like a rate hike or like, hey, we're going to rate, we're going to do a half a point next. Uh, you know, I don't see how they don't hike more. Why would they not hike more when gas is at $6 or $5 in California and probably, you know, $4 in Texas? Why would they not rate hike more, cause a little more damage, um, inflict some more pain on the market to bring inflation down and really stomp out inflation. Remember, Powell said, oh, we got to stomp out inflation. On the other side of the fence, Ralph Paul says, hey, look, he thinks we've already had the recession. He thinks possibly, uh, you know, it's time, it's time to plan for the bull market and liquidity to come back into these markets. So a bit of a, you know, everybody's saying it's, it, 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 a bit of a coin toss. And um, what I do like, um, again, for our support and why I've, you know, essentially held some long positions through this bearish time is the blue buy signal on the hash ribbons indicator, which is our right, secondary chart here. Boom. Which has only failed two times in its history. 
two times in its history. We've had 15 signals. What is the signal? Blue buy signal or minor com minor capitulation, blue buy signal. And then Bitcoin makes a new all-time high. New all-time high uh, and never comes back and breaks the previous low. So uh, the previous weekly low. And so it's just another blue buy signal. And if we are going to make a new all-time high, well, we want to see essentially this, guys. We want to see that $35,000 level get reclaimed right there. And, you know, essentially Bitcoin, you could sum it up into two massive ranges here, right? Two massive ranges. Above here, we're going to be back in the range. So we break above, make a higher low, and, you know, that's your next range. If we stay back below here um, and, you know, essentially put in a, another lower high on the daily time frame, that'll be your major warning signal, Um major warning signal that, hey, downtrend has continued and uh, more bearish divergence and, you know, uh, possibly, possibly, you know, uh, that $20,000 level we were talking about. But uh, more importantly, you know, 26,000 needs to hold right now. 26,000 above their good, below their bad. And we'll judge it from there. I hope you guys did enjoy some of the information. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. And post a comment below if you have a question. Have a blessed and highly favored day, and I will see you guys back tomorrow. Did I cover all the economic dates uh, Tuesday? Let's let's just remind myself here. Uh, economic date. So, building permit Tuesday. That's tomorrow. FOMC Wednesday. Jobless claim Friday, and home sales. Sorry, jobless claim and home sales Thursday. And S&P Global Manufacturing on Friday. So a lot of economic news coming out this week. Um, and, uh, you know, what's the big story with, oh, no, Yellen and Biden are on the news. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somebody's not going to be able to put two sentences together. Watch out. Um, watch out. Oh, my gosh. Did he did he fall? Um, tether dominance. Tether dominance. This is good. This is good for our, um, you know, we want to see tether dominance come down again. A break above this level will be likely catastrophic for the altcoin market. And um, do you want to take a look at Ethereum really quick here and see if, um, wow, we also got the, uh, hmm, hmm. Little bots are going to work for me there. Um, volatility index coming down. When, vol when the VIX goes down, stocks go up. When the VIX goes up, stocks go down. Typically, that's how it rolls. Um, oh, yeah, the bond market. Interesting. Interesting. So, um, as you can see, the dollar's coming down a little bit today, providing a little bounce. Here's what I don't like, guys. Uh, you know, most of the big stocks are down today, down Tesla down 2.5%, Microsoft's down, NVIDIA was down, Costco down, uh, JP Morgan, ooh, FRC. This one just continues to rip down. I don't know how this is still trading. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how many like 50% down days I've been watching. This is, this is awful. Um, JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon's, mm. um, Anyways, uh, getting back into the bond market, and we hit our target, guys. It's official. The two-year hit 5.22%. Where did we get that target? Well, I'm going to get rid of this. Go back to my regular chart here. Number nine. Chart number nine. Getting rid of that. And, uh, well, that put me back on Bitcoin. Here we go. <clears throat> Is that, I guess we market opened at 5.2 and dumped pretty quick in the bond market, but and that is a potential reversal candle, just to be fair. But, uh, you know, if you've been watching my channel for some time, I did say very, very likely based on 
the way the market was looking, that we'd at least take out these highs. And uh, I guess the next target up is 6.8%. Uh, tenure, the tenure also hit our target of uh, 4.32. And I'm willing to bet it does take a, another leg higher. Uh, every, you know, bonds are going <laughs> to, interest rates, I, in my opinion, probably going to head higher. Um, and this one as well, uh, 4.3, we didn't hit the first target yet. So man, if you're looking to buy a home, not financial advice, but, uh, interest rates are probably going to go higher here. The Brazilian real. Oh, bit of a, bit of a short opportunity there. Gosh, I wish, you know, anyways, I'll get into that in a minute. The 30 year, 30 year is, you know, why, why would you get 5% on a two year and only four and 4.4 on a 30 year? It doesn't make sense. You should get paid more to lock up your money for a longer period of time. That's why I think there's a good chance bonds can still go higher. Um, yep. With that, I'm going to leave you guys. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. See you tomorrow. Take care.